Hey students, are you having trouble with getting dates? Well, help is on the way, because in this video, we'll be talking about the date object in JavaScript. The date object allows us to capture and store a split second in time. This can be very useful when working with data that refers to date or time information. If you watch this video in its entirety, you will be able to explain the date object in JavaScript. Create a date with the date object using an empty constructor, a string constructor, a constructor with a numeric value for milliseconds, and identify how milliseconds are used in the date. Now that you know what's going to be covered, let's get you a date. The date object is one of many built-in objects available in JavaScript. The date object stores date and time information. To capture the current date and time, we simply need to call an empty constructor. You'll notice I've opened a text editor with a basic HTML template. Next, we'll type the var reserved word, followed by the name of a variable. We'll call our variable test date. We'll type an assignment operator followed by the new reserved word. After new, we'll type the word date and parentheses. When we are working with primitive types like booleans or numbers, we simply type a value after the assignment operator. The new reserved word is used to create the object and the object we're creating is a date object. This statement will call the date constructor with no arguments. If we had any arguments, we would type them between the parentheses. We'll do this in a later example. I'll finish the statement with a semicolon, and we'll follow it with a statement to display the date. We'll type console log, then test date to display the date object. We can save what we've done and test. I can use Control, Shift, and J in Chrome, open up the console. And to the right, you'll see our date is displayed. Now that we have seen how to create the date object, there are a few things that are worth noting. First, you'll notice that the date object captures both date and time. Even though time isn't mentioned in the name of the object, time is still there. Next, you'll notice that the time zone is mentioned in the output. You can see that currently my computer is set up in the Greenwich Mean Time. You'll notice the Greenwich Time Zone displayed in the map in green has a zero offset, just like we saw when I had the console open in Chrome. Currently, I'm living in the United States in the Eastern Time Zone. That puts me five hours off of the Greenwich time zone. So you'll notice there's a minus five displayed above the Eastern time zone. Here you can see I've opened the date and time settings of my computer with the Windows operating system. With both set time automatically and set time zone automatically set to off, I can change the time zone and time settings. If I were to change my time zone in the date and time settings, I can display the Eastern time zone, and now when I run my code, you'll notice that Eastern Daylight Time is displayed in the console. You'll also notice that it says that there's a four hour difference with the Greenwich Mean Time. An important thing to note is that it says Eastern Daylight Time. The reason that we have a difference in our map, which is five hours off, and our console, which is four hours off, is that we are accounting for daylight savings time. I'm creating this video in the summertime, so we've moved the clocks forward one hour. In addition to using the date object with an empty constructor, I can also use a valid string for the date. For example, Alan Turing, arguably one of the greatest computer scientists and a fascinating chap, was born on June 23, 1912. 
To store Turing's birthday in a constant, we could type the keyword const, followed by a variable name. We'll use Turing birthday. Next, we'll type the assignment operator. And to create our object, the new reserved word. We're creating a date, so we'll type date. And in parentheses, we can type a valid string that represents the birth date. To create the string, we'll type quote June 23rd, 1912. To see how this works, we'll write some output to the console. We can save our work and run the code. Again, Control Shift and J to open the console. And you can see the date is displayed to the console. One final technique for creating the date object that I want to share in this video is the creation of the date object by providing a numeric value as an argument. This numeric value represents the number of milliseconds that have passed since January 1st, 1970. Since the date object is based on the coordinated universal time, if the host operating system is in a time zone which has an offset, the number of milliseconds will automatically be adjusted. To eliminate any confusion with the time offset, I'm going to go into date and time settings again and change my time zone. Now let's open another HTML template and create a date using the milliseconds constructor. As we had done before, we'll create a variable give it a name, create a new date object. I'm going to type the number zero in just to let you see that zero represents January 1st, 1970 UTC like I'd been speaking about before. Go into the console log, Create some output. And let's save and test our work. I'll press Control Shift J to open the console. And you can see that zero milliseconds is represented by January 1st, 1970. Back to our code, let's say we want to represent one second. There are 1,000 milliseconds in a second. So I can update time and save my work, switch back to Chrome, and I'll reload the page. You can see in the console that we now have one second added to our January 1st, 1970. If I wanted five seconds, I can go back to the code, and rather than using 1,000, I can use 5,000. If one second is 1,000, multiply it times five, we have 5,000 milliseconds in five seconds. I'll save, switch to Chrome, and reload, and now five seconds is represented in the console. Back in the code window, I can change this to 60 seconds. 60 times 1,000 is 60,000, and this would represent one minute. Notice I can save, and if I reload, you can see a minute is now represented. There are 60 minutes in an hour. If I go back to my code here and multiply 60,000 times 60, I'll get an hour. Since 60,000 times 60 is 3,600,000, I can now update my code and refreshing the browser gives me one hour. 
Be careful when expressing values greater than hours. It can be done with some research, but different day lengths due to daylight savings time and other factors can cause anomalies in the calculations. In this video, we've provided an explanation of the date object in JavaScript. We've created a date with the date object using an empty constructor, a string constructor, a constructor with a numeric value which represents milliseconds, and we've identified how milliseconds are used in the date. I hope you found this information useful. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and like this video.